I'm going to take your questions, but first I want to describe what has been going on uh, for several weeks back in DC. For several weeks, I have been working very closely with the White House and the Forest Service to make sure that they are prepared to deal with an unprecedented fire season to the West. Specifically, the danger of multiple big fires, infernos, taking place simultaneously across the Western states. And these fires are going to stretch local, state, and federal resources to the breaking point unless we are prepared. Millions of Westerners this morning are collectively holding their breath about the prospect of one of these infernos ripping through their town. I wanna say this morning that I expect the Biden administration will have more to say publicly about this threat, this grave threat in the next few days to the West. And I'm happy to take your questions about fighting fire, the budget, the various plans that are under uh, discussion. And I just wanted particularly to give you an update about the work that I'm doing with the Biden administration and the Forest Service, closely working uh, with them that uh, Westerners are gonna learn more about over the next few days. People have questions, they can either uh, send that to me in the chat room or just raise your hand, please. Uh, Dick Hughes goes first, please. Thank you. Good to see you, Senator. Um, what has been the response from the, the federal fire officials, uh, the Forest Service, et cetera? Um, and do you believe their response, depending upon what they've said, and, and what more needs to be done? Here are the specifics. And I have been raising this in public hearings and private conversations. Every single day, I'm zeroing in on the urgency of what I believe we're dealing with, Dick. And specifically, I believe what we'll hear is about uh, making sure that there are personnel available in the West to fight multiple fires, the big fires, at the same time. And the reason I've emphasized it, this, Dick, is because this is a departure from the past. Usually, we'd have one big fire and other Western states would chip in, chip in for the state that was hit the hardest. So if Oregon had a big fire, Nevada, Idaho, California would all help. Now, as I have been focused on with the administration and the Forest Service, we're talking about something that's unprecedented, which is big fires simultaneously throughout the West. And at our recent uh, hearing before the uh, Energy Committee, uh, Dick, uh, Vicki Christensen, the head of the Forest Service said that she felt that very often resources are already at the breaking point. So what we're going to hear about this week is making sure that there are personnel available to fight multiple fires at the same time. There's equipment to back that up. And that always means tankers and technology and the like. And that local, state, and federal firefighters are going to be tightly coordinated, tightly coordinated in order to deal with this very grave threat. Thank you. Uh, and next will be Aaron from Kobe. Thank you. Thank you for having us and holding this for us. Um, and good morning. I the question I had was, what would you recommend the public do at this time with severe drought, possibility of fires? I mean, every summer there's a possibility of fires, but what would you say from your experience looking forward this summer? How what can we do to make it through? 
I have been across the state asking forest, forestry officials about that. Obviously, folks that are out in the community, when they see any sign, for example, of drop matches or people uh, near uh, hazardous fuels, uh, burns in their neighborhood, these kinds of things, the really important thing for people to do is not take but a minute in calling the local fire officials, the local forest, uh, forestry folks and uh, the public health uh, people. Uh, they have been posting their numbers, running public service uh, information all over social media, all over the news media. But what the public can say is we can be the watchdogs over some of these threats. When we see somebody dropping a match or we see somebody burning or engaging in a practice that could set off one of these very big fires, local government has set up uh, good contacts and good phone numbers and accessible ways to weigh in and let pe people know. And I would really use this morning's opportunity before all of you to emerge to urge Oregonians to be citizen watchdogs, citizen watchdogs to help us prevent these infernos by making sure they report as quickly as they see evidence of a problem to local forestry and public health officials. Thank you. And the next question will be Peter Wongs. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Do you think the agencies need any more money at this is at this juncture? Or obviously, uh, it's hard to predict the future. But uh, uh, won't, will they have to come come back to Congress for any emergency money? Peter, there are kind of two pieces to answering your question. In other words, I do believe that it's going to take additional resources to deal with this especially grave situation I've described this morning. The prospect of big fires all over the West at the same time and how different that is from what we traditionally have been dealing with. I think that will take additional um, resources. And I expect in a matter of days, the Biden administration will be outlining the steps that uh, I have touched on uh, that constitutes their strategy against this grave threat. One other additional uh, piece of information on resources, I asked Vicki Christensen, the head of the Forest Service, about what it would take to get out in front of the hazardous fuels buildup problem. For folks who are following this, these hazardous fuels are very dry materials that accumulate on the forest floor. There's a match, there's a lightning strike, all of a sudden there's an inferno. And there are millions and millions of acres that need to be thinned. I went through the math that I thought described the resources necessary to deal with this hazardous fuels backlog, Peter, and it's $20 billion to get out in front of the backlog, according to my math, and Vicki Christensen confirmed it. Thanks. And I think Dick has the last question. He has one more question. Um, first, did I understand you 20 billion with a B? Yes. And that is to deal with the hazardous fuels buildup right. on the forest floor. And we took the amount that they would have to spend per acre and the like. We ran the math. I asked Ms. Christensen uh, at this hearing where I also uh, zeroed in on this whole question of how you're gonna deal with multiple big fires simultaneously at the West, in the West. And I wanna make sure, and I uh, was touching on it uh, uh, with Peter, that we've got two hugely important issues to deal with. One is right now, the prospect given the fact that we've got fires in lots of places in the West right now at the beginning of the summer is just a wake up call. And it is why I have been bulldogging this effort with the White House and the Forest Service to work with them to make sure we're prepared uh, for a situation that 
Uh, if we're not tightly coordinated and we don't have uh, the personnel and, and the technology, we're gonna be facing very grave threats. And that's something that uh, I believe in the next few days, uh, Oregon and the West will be hearing about uh, from uh, the administration and, uh, and the Forest Service. The hazardous fuels issue is both a short-term and a long-term uh, issue. There are other efforts that are part of what I'm doing. I propose a 21st Century Civilian Conservation Corps Act. Now, if that had been law right now, when there was a big fire, those members of the Corps could help homeowners and businesses reduce fire risk. I think it would be very helpful. I'm pushing hard for my national prescribed fire act. That's something you use during the cooler, wetter months. So you don't have as many threats uh, in these dangerous seasons like right now. And also a, a disaster safe power a grid act so that uh, power companies are working to reduce uh, the risks of wildfire uh, through power system upgrades and fire and disaster equipment. It is a public private um, partnership. So those are all important pieces of our fighting fire strategy right now. My biggest concern, and maybe uh, taking another question, but uh, we may be wrapping up. My biggest concern is that I've tried in every way, working every day with uh, the administration, the White House, and the Forest Service, because I think what we're dealing with as a threat is very different than what we've seen in my lifetime. What we've seen in my lifetime, and I've been through a few of these fire seasons, and one time I chaired uh, the committee that had authority over this. You'd have a big fire in one state. Everybody else would pitch in to help, and the resources were used well that way. My point to the White House and the Forest Service is as I've gotten around the state uh, and particularly in the rural uh, communities, I'm absolutely convinced that for Westerners, for all of us in the West, the millions of people in the West, there is a very real threat of having big fires, multiple fires at the same time all over the West. And this is a especially serious threat. And I have been working very closely with the Biden administration and, uh, and the Forest Service to be prepared for it. And given the fact that Vicki Christensen said in response to me in an earlier hearing that uh, resources were already at the breaking point, uh, this is urgent business. Senators, we have two final questions, uh, the first of which is from Chuck Thompson of Columbia Insight. And then after that will be uh, John Murray from KPMW and then uh, Senator Wyden will wrap up. Uh, thank you. Senator, uh, you spoke uh, about the public as a watchdog in this. I'm wondering if during times of extreme fire hazard, has there been any consideration given to restricting public you know, recreation access to state or national forests, just keeping people out of them? Well, I'll let the resources specialists uh, give you a specific answer to what their recommendations for a particular uh, area are. What they have been saying, because at a number of my meetings around the state in rural areas, they join me, is their premier focus with citizens is having those folks be as watchful as possible. Because when they're on the ground, they're out recreating, um, they're going to see uh, threats and problems. And just the fact that they'll you know, immediately go to their smartphone or text it in, they think that's the most important thing. There may be areas, um, Chuck, where uh, the natural resources specialists and public health authorities may want to consider additional steps, but overwhelmingly, that's what these specialists are asking local folks to do. And then the final question will be from John uh, KPNW and then Senator Wyden will wrap up. Hey, Senator, thanks so much uh, for meeting with us today in this huge huge issue. Uh, I'm out of Eugene and uh, you know we still have refugees from the fires up the Mackenzie and a lot of folks on the street. Uh, what we saw in Talent in Phoenix was that um, these communities uh, 
uh, of the homeless population living there right along I-5, along in the blackberry bushes. Uh, they're, they're in uh, very extreme danger, and I'm wondering if we can get a sneak preview of what's coming up Wednesday when the Western governors go to the White House. Might there be some programs targeted specifically for these populations? Thank you very much. The answer is yes, and uh, John, particularly as chairman of the Finance Committee, we're the committee that is charged with the responsibility of raising revenue largely for um, a whole host of issues. And one of them is this question of the safety net. And so uh, I'm focused particularly on uh, the homeless and the mental health situation uh, in our state. Uh, folks may know in the bill that was passed in March, I was able to get a billion dollars for what's called the CAHOOTS program. You folks in Eugene know about it, where the police and mental health work together to deal with uh, challenging situations on the street involving, in many instances, folks who are homeless, folks who have mental health uh, uh, concerns. So uh, that will be an important part of what's discussed in the days ahead, as I say, uh, the public can expect to hear uh, lots more detail uh, this week because uh, having worked with the White House and natural resources um, agencies, we've been focused on a number of the specifics that are going to be discussed, particularly this unprecedented threat I've described of big fires almost everywhere um, in the West. And uh, you bet uh, the Senate Finance Committee, which I chair, which is largely responsible for raising revenue, we're going to be very focused on making sure that uh, uh, we're strengthening the safety net for the people you're talking about. Folks who have mental health um, challenges, folks who are homeless, and uh, these issues are deeply personal to me. My late brother was schizophrenic and there were nights, um, certainly summer nights, when he was alive, when the Wyden family went to bed every single night, worried that he was gonna hurt himself or somebody else on the streets. So I feel very strongly about this. Um, I just wanna say now, uh, having outlined what I believe is you know, the urgency of this unprecedented you know, threat in the West and describe some of the other steps that are gonna take place uh, this up, up, upcoming week. I'm going to a cooling center this afternoon at the Oregon Convention Center you know, in Portland. And I wanna just make sure I give two big thank yous before I go. First to all the volunteers across Oregon working, pitching in, helping families, all wanting to make sure that, that we do everything we can to keep Oregonians safe during this historic heat wave. And then I wanna give a big shout out to all our firefighters, all the people who are willing every week to put their lives at risk in order to secure ours. And I've met a lot of them in the last few weeks as I've gotten around the, uh, the state and particularly rural areas. And folks hear me talk a lot about the Oregon way which is how we all pitch in, we all help. It's not about politics. These firefighters, these incredibly courageous firefighters, they're exhibit A when we talk about the Oregon way. And I think all Oregonians uh, this weekend ought to give a special shout out, a special thanks to these firefighters because they make us really proud and uh, they're practicing the Oregon way every day. Thanks everybody, appreciate your interest. Thank you so much. Thank you.